everyone. Hello. And let me get started. Some people here might know what I'm talking about. So I, I'm a little bit feeling a little bit obtuse when I have the way I'm going to come up with it, how I'm going to explain this. I don't know if you know, most of you have heard of Robert Frost, who was very well known for his use of nature and how he used it to relate it to any situation we might be going through. In this poem, he's out for a walk in the woods and come upon a sparkler specter. Watch for the clues that Frost gives as to what this specter might be and why it is so unusual to come upon it in the middle of the woods. First, let me explain. Mira is a poem rhythm and structure, a pattern of stressed or untressed syllable in each sentence or line. Prose is what we do every day. All right? So we can, it's clear, concise, no symbolism, no imagery. <coughs> clear to the point. Cadence is derived from the Latin word cadencia, that means a falling. Is a term used to signal the rising and falling of the voice. Rhythm, the word derived from rhythmus, rich, is a Greek word which means measure motion. Rhythm is literary, it's a literary, literary, literary device which demonstrates a long and short pattern through stress and untrust syllable, particularly in a verse form. And rhyme, you end up with the same letter. Similar sounding words occurring at the end of lines in poems or songs. Now I will present to you the encounter. <coughs> Once on a kind of day, cold weather breather, when the heat slowly hazes and the sun by its own power seems to be undone, I was half boring through half climbing through a swamp of cedar. Choked with oil of cedar and scurf of plants and weary and overheated and sorry I ever left that road I knew, I paused and rested on a sort of hook that had me by the coat as good as seated. And since there was no other way to look, looked up towards heaven. And there against the blue stood over me a resurrected <coughs> tree a tree that had been down and raised again, a barkless specter. He had halted too, as is for fear of trees treading upon me. I saw the strange position of his hand, up at his shoulder, dragging yellow strands of wire with something in it from men to men. You're here, I said. Where are you nowadays? And what's the new you carry, if you know? And tell me where you're all for. Montreal? Me? I'm not off anywhere at all. Sometimes I wander out of big ways, half looking for the orchid calypso. What did I just read? Do you see pros in this uh, point? Kind of lost in the woods? Mm -hmm. So let's bring some clarity. This poem is written, the structure of the poem is in stanza. One stanza, which means each sentence is, each sentence is describing something different. I'm going to pass this over to you and see if it makes sense as, as uh, I explain it to you. Okay. So make it a little bit clearer. Line one through three. He's describing this day in which the heat of the sun are taking over, but the weather breather can signify changes that is to come. Line seven, where he said he's sorry that he, on the side he's, he's heated, he's overpowered, and now he's thinking that he should have stayed on the road, on the path that he was, instead of wandering off. This also can mean that being sorry the left of road he took, he's reminiscing of his past and the life revolving around nature, how it might be changing. Line 12 to 13, 
that resurrected tree can mean a tree that was once used in the beauty of nature and now is being used as a telephone pole. And it leads death and resurrection. It was a beautiful tree, now it's a sparkling specter. To him it's an apparition. What is it doing in the middle of, my, of the woods? Does it have a place in it? Line 15, the fear that is treading upon frost is the fear that we will come to the point which we do not appreciate nature and only value technology. Have you seen a part of this? I don't know, I didn't look at the year that it was written, but we're here with technology, all right? We don't get off our phone. We don't take those walk. Now people can stay on, in their comfortable home and put that television on and look at the forest, look at the traveling program. Go to Europe while you're sitting in your, on your, in your room. Line 18, being wired man to man reveal that technology <coughs> will link everyone, everyone together and people will no longer have privacy. What do you think? We think we're private, right? But we all carry a cell phone, we all have computers, they can find us anytime they want. And just because we delete something doesn't mean that it disappears. So Robert <coughs> Frost was into something with when he wrote this uh, poem. Line 21, the news that carry off to Montreal shows how quickly technology is spreading and how much power it has that it can even be um, equal to God in how fast it reaches the border. Today, it, we, the, our world has shrunk, right? Like I said, we can get in that computer and um, streamline or uh, Skype anywhere. So he, I mean, this is something, he's just concerned about this beautiful tree that now has become a life pool and is intrusing in the forest. Today, we have that everywhere we go. Not just the power, but the, uh, but not the towel, or the phone towers and cell for the cell phone. Line 24, looking for the orchid calypso can signify that nature that we know will soon be concealed and we will no longer have the appreciation for nature and we will no longer explore the world because technology will connect us, connect us to everything. So just by you looking, I want to see if you see any of those connections. Last, I want to tell you about the, again, looking at the line, the literal, literary devices that he uses. Line one, two, three, he uses he creates a setting. He uses imagery to create a setting. A day where the sun is out at its strongest, bringing the heat to overpower him. There goes the prose. We could have said this in this way, but no, he went into that imaginary line. He uses figurative language. The poet uses figurative language to show how the tree is so big and powerful, its oil can overtake a person. The tree is personified to die and relieve to reveal that technology is using tree for different purposes. Line one through five and five to thirteen of the structure. On the line 1921, the poem broadcasts his opinion to show how far technology is. He uses a paradox in 22 and 23, and he contradicts himself by saying he's not going anywhere, yet he won't be looking for the orchid calypso. He uses symbolism on line 23, the orchid calypso, which is a rare plant that is grown in the West Hemisphere, and it's a, it has a purple, yellow, and white flower. Symbolizes nature that will be hidden from future generations. Again, it's a mythology, and it's something that we don't see every day. And with that, I want to tell you, don't be afraid of the interpreter reading manual. You will learn a lot just by doing this. I'm excited to know the things that I can do and find out from poetry. Thank you very much for your attention.